Welcome to the Going Green podcast. Today we're going to have a look at water again. We've looked at it before, but this time in the media, they're talking about getting ready for a drought well, in the UK. Yeah, well, I mean, not just the media. I mean, all the water companies and you know, the environment have been starting there talking about potential drought season. Well, so. every five years, all the water companies are bound to make, by le legal reasons, to produce a drought plan. And it happens that now is when they're just, all these companies are publishing their drought plans. So it's very much in the eye of the media. They're seeing all these plans being produced and therefore they ought to be making some comment on it. And we have had a fairly dry winter and dry spring. And so we're also looking at sort of, well, what do we need to do about um, the drought? In fact, on Tuesday, the 26th of July, the Environment Agency convened the National Drought Group. And that's made up from all the people from the Environment Agency, the government, the water companies, all, all those sort of places. And the Angling Trust, I think, even belong to that, and the Rivers Trust. And they discussed the current situation, and they agreed actions to uh, protect water resources and the environment in the UK in, in the weeks ahead. We have some guttering going up next door. Speaking of water. Speaking of water, yes. Yeah, so it's going on there. So... You know, we've got a lot of warm water weather in this country, and we're following one of the driest winters and springs since the 1970s, according to the Met Office. So we're now in what we have been called a prolonged dry weather status. Uh, and basically, it now means that all these different water companies, etc., are having to sort of take precautionary actions yes that, that doesn't mean doing anything it just means taking precautionary actions basically the the actions come down to five different levels the first of the levels is just tell people you know this is a precaution we're not doing anything just sort of think about sort of what you're doing save some water because then the next one that comes in is what's called a tub. Now, I thought it was called a hosepipe ban, but it's not. It's called a tub. What the hell is a tub? The tub is a temporary use ban. Hey. Oh, I thought it was rather cute, really. And that restricts certain activities that could use a hosepipe. And that means sort of they could stop you using... Uh, a hose pipe to you know, water, water your, your garden. Water your lawn, yeah. Yeah. A garden also does mean a park, a verge, a sports pitch, an allotment, all sorts of things. Uh, it suggests that, you know, they could stop you uh, watering your car you know, when you're washing it with, a, it with a hose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Washing your car. Well. Washing a car, yeah. Well, they actually say, yeah, just so oh, that, okay. You can stop people watering plants on domestic or non-commercial premises using hosepipe. They can stop you cleaning your leisure boat. Oh. I, I wish I had a leisure boat to clean, but uh, anyway. Um, they can stop you filling or maintaining your domestic swimming pool or even a paddling pool. <gasps> that doesn't mean to say you can't fill a paddling pool up with a bucket. It just means you can't use a hose to do it. Oh, yes. Uh, you can't use a hose pipe to draw water for domestic recreational use. What, what do you mean, draw water? Like, like I, I can draw... Well, that, 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 yeah, I don't think they actually mean getting your pencil out, Paul. It does mean that what, what you're doing is using all sorts of water toys. You could sort of use your hose sort of as a, a sort of a water pistol or whatever you wanted to use any recreational purposes uh you're not allowed to fill your pond uh 
you are allowed to sort of keep your ornamental fountain uh, filled up because yeah. it's just a filling up. You're not supposed to clean your walls or windows with a hose pipe or your patio or, well, any artificial surface. But all of those are with a hose pipe. They don't say that you can't clean your car with a bucket of water. It doesn't say that you can't sort of go and water your plants to keep them going with a bucket of water or water. Yeah, it's but it's basically using this idea of a hose pipe. So that's the first one. That's the tub. Oh. I thought that was quite exciting, really, the tub. I hadn't come across a tub before. No. And the, according to the water authorities, they have only have to use these about one in every 10 years, which isn't too bad. You know, we haven't had that many hose pipe bands I do remember, in yeah. where we live. I remember having one in, what, 10 years ago? So it's on about right. About, about right to choose one. Then there's also the drought order restrictions and these basically come in about every 40 years and the last time one of those actually came out was before you were born paul oh. and that is in 19 or was in 1976 which was the the great hot summer which is uh, basically it was a long dry summer and it was quite hot. Was that in the year 1976? Yes. And it wasn't as hot, he says, trying to fiddle with his headphones, as it was this year. But it was hotter for longer. You know, we, we were up to about 30, but we are up to about 30 Celsius for quite a few weeks. I can remember that time vividly because it was the year, one of the years when I was taking some, uh, well, in fact, for me, a levels advanced level examination and our exams started really early in the morning and they started really early in the morning so that they didn't have to have them going on in the noonday sun oh right i see yes and you know we'd be getting there at sort of i think the exam started at sort of about seven o'clock in the morning oh. and they had all the doors to the hall open and all the curtains drawn and uh, we sat in the gloom there, desperately trying to write in the heat. And they, we were actually allowed water bottles. Oh, that was a big thing then. It, it was, it was. We'd never been allowed those sort of things before. And as well as sort of this 1976, this is a year when I decided with my family to go on holiday on the canals. Mm. And the canals in England are wonderful things. We've got loads of canals stretching all over the place. They're very scenic. And we decided to borrow a friend's boat, uh, Esmeralda by name. Oh, wow. And um, he took it down to somewhere because he'd always wanted to go one plate way. And we, we took it back. And uh, we went up, first of all, the River Severn. And um, the River Severn was so low that when we were in one of the big locks, and they are big locks there, um, there's a ladder that comes down. And when the warp boat went in, you couldn't see, you couldn't see the ladder because it was so high up. And when they filled the lock, it only filled about uh, a quarter full. And we still couldn't reach the ladder to get off. Oh. Right, okay. because that's how low the water was. And when we sort of cruised out the other end, you know, the water was sort of really, really low. You could sort of, you were looking up at the river banks and deciding that, uh, oh, you can't stop here because, you know, there was nowhere to moor. And when we moored against jetties, you had to climb up the jetty instead of being sort of stepping down onto the jetty. Yes. And, uh, quite exciting going around then that sort of time mm. and there were a few odd things that you'd never heard of which were standpipes yes well we, i mentioned this because the news that they were talking about all these things and the different drought levels you know basically it, it, it's a series of five levels with five being um you know everything normal and then level four is this um increased risk of a drought not a not actually a drought but 
increase with yeah, you know, this is to help water prevention and all those sorts of things. But then you move into a, a short drought, which is basically sort of, you know, it's only for a short period of time, you know, so a hose pipe ban, those sort of things. And then they were getting further down the line of a level two, which is um where no water to the houses at all. And they were talking about how, you know, which was used in nineteen sixty six yeah, nineteen seventy six. Which was these things called standing pipes. And I was like Not standing pipes. Stand, stand pipes. pipes. Sorry, I, I, I can't get it there. Anyway, so I asked a really silly question of what's a stand pipe. Admittedly I did ask what was a standing pipe, then realized those two things are different. Anyway, so they were talking about these things because they stand pipes were in nineteen seventy six. So the last time they were widely used in this country. Yeah. Now, they do get used occasionally when you've got something like a, a burst water main and no houses get supplied and they can get water with the standpipes. But we're, we're talking a, a different procedure here, aren't we? Yes, exactly. So it was one of those things. So we, we investigated, or well, I investigated what the hell was a standpipe. And it's basically is think of the water system like a series of um net like like a body inside you've got your big arteries and your um you're right yeah yeah okay uh <laughs> adjusting his uh <laughs> big, big arteries and it went down all the way to your capillaries almost like um your body's um uh cardiovascular system anyway what they did is if for a standpipe they cut off the little pipes the one that goes to everybody houses and you have to go and they put the uh, basically a tap on the larger network pipe where you basically live in. and then you have to take your i say your bucket your water container and you can collect water and i imagine that would be metered and that would be say you've had your allocated 10 liters or five liters or whatever who knows you know, generally generally it's what you can carry yeah when when, when i did this in 1976 uh, you, you just took your little water container and you filled it up and they were quite happy just filling it up. Uh, bearing in mind, you, you can't carry too much because, uh, you know, if you've got too big a water container, you can't shift it. You know, you had to lug it. And where we only had to do that was when we were on a boat because it wasn't in the area where I was living. So when we did meet some stand pipes, we had to walk to get the, the water and uh it was um interesting but in fact most of the places where we actually got the water from for the boat because you know the only thing you're using there is to filling up the drinking water uh a lot of the places we actually got it from were actually stand pipes anyway yes, on the canal yeah exactly so you know, so as i say we're not saying these aren't new things it's just one of the things where it's the allocation of even residential areas for the a community so we're going to get his water from one place now admittedly they have said of course if there was problems with all the elderly not being able to get there they said the, the bowsers could come out and have to deliver water you know there's a whole procedure inside this uh you know level of emergency sort of route procedure yeah i could just imagine my 90 year old mother managing to get to the standpipe which could be quite a challenge for her anyway it's a long walk and she walks there with her zimmer frame and um it would be how she would actually manage to get back lugging some water and she's on a list she won't have to worry exactly so so uh, you know there are things and procedures and all sorts of but it, it's the idea that you will have to collect water instead of water to you yeah you wouldn't be able to ha no water to the house at all you won't be if it happened in winter you'll have no hot water because, or like saying, because there'd be no water in in certain of the system, you see. So you can only have what water you've got in the house to circulate around. So it's a whole that problem. But they're hoping, obviously, by winter there'll be enough rain and water to relieve, you know, back up the list. And then finally, you've got the lovely final stage of stage one, which of course is much worse. Of, uh, yeah, how far, how far is which is rationing of water as in instead of just having a water container you only get five litres and that's it yeah you, once you've had your five litres a day that's it yeah when i was reading the water plans for that 
That's called things like an emergency drought order. And basically, my water authority just considers that unacceptable. They're not even going to consider going that far. No, I'm... 1976 was one of the hottest, longest, sunniest, and droughtiest, yeah, interesting word, uh, summers that we've had in recent years. But it was also followed by one of the wettest. And so uh, the summer of 76 didn't lead on to an autumn that was going to be terribly dry and no water because we actually had a lot of rain. So that was uh, yeah. that was quite good, so, really. So, yes, yeah, so just saying it's sort of it, it's this level of sort of going worse and worse and worse yeah. and worse, and so well, they can climb back up and down. There's no problem. You know. It's just you've got to. It's in what level? It's sort of you know what level they can declare what you know the they have the authority to declare for these actions and things. So all right, let me let me ask you a simple question then, Paul. What is a drought? Well, I'm going to say a period of prolonged, um, of, um, of zero, a period of zero rain or, or in, of no rainfall. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 uh, where the moisture content of the ground gets low. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's something to do with the sunny weather, the warm weather and how much water we've got. I'm going to put those, 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 those things. Out. Okay. All right. I'll give you a definition. A drought is a natural event. Oh, right. Yeah. And it happens when there's an extended period of low, not necessarily no, but low rainfall. Right. And that will create a shortage of water for people, for the environment, for agriculture, and for industry. Right. But of course, every drought's different, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, where they are what they affect, how long, how severe. It depends what industry you've got. It depends on how many customers you've got, how many sort of communities in that area, what businesses you've got. And a drought can occur almost whatever the weather. Oh, how nice. Well, that makes sense. Because you can actually have a drought in winter when there's lots of snow. Yeah. I so if it was that. very dry and then it, you had a lot of snow, the snow wouldn't actually melt so that you wouldn't get any more water. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Anyway, so there are three types of drought. Oh, oh, right. Okay, here we go. Okay. So you can have a single season drought. Right, okay. Which I'm... is what we're, we're looking at now in this country, the UK. Uh We've had a dry sort of winter, a dry spring, so we've had significantly lower than an average amount of rainfall. And our groundwater systems have not been effectively replenished. Right, yeah, that sounds reasonable. And, and that can cause some temporary usage restrictions, which is what we're talking about. Then. However, coming are the multiple dry winter droughts and this is where we've got back-to-back -back dry winters and with climate change we're looking at these perhaps happening more often oh no and this is where the groundwater levels will be significantly reduced and the flow of local rivers will also be significantly be reduced and that's a year upon year thing and that that's a two-year back on back dry winter, as opposed to a longer term drought, which is technically called three years or more. Right. Okay. And that is going to cause a lot more interesting things to happen. Now we get the one year single season drought occasionally. Yeah. We haven't yet had a multiple dry winter one. Right. Okay but we're due to get one soon because climate change is affecting this. Yeah. And a longer term one, we've yet to have one of those and we don't look forward to it very much. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So, yeah. So, but not only are we in the UK here suffering uh, a large drought or, you know, is that the, um, 
recently, very uh, almost to the same day, the European um, authority. It, it's called the European Drought Observatory. Ooh, I don't know, which I think is probably sort of the Water National Drought Committee or whatever. But we have, but yeah, we have it. yeah. Anyway. Probably ours is still linked to whatever they had when um, they were in existence. Yeah, when we were part of the EU. Yeah, right. Yeah, anyway, so so anyway, there's, it's, there's this similar body except it's on a more larger EU Commission style as opposed to being a single account. Anyway, and they have said that approximately uh, half of the EU is and then of uh, then 22% of EU countries. I'm not quite sure how that works in number and things, but are a, a, a prone or at risk of having a drought the same as we are and um additionally sort of we're also not inside their category but it's also included because of course we're also having the drought for the same problem and they're not talking about things where you've got sort of the desert in, in spain they're not talking about those areas they are they are generally talking about uh other areas around that are experiencing the same sort of conditions we have been in line for a drought as you said you know droughts are just related to water as opposed to the seasonal weather so it, it, yeah so but it was one of the things where a lot of france's power system of course are made by nuclear power nuclear power of course is cooled by water france is about to enter into a, a risk period of drought which means, of course, water that could go to the nuclear power plants can't get there. So they're sort of having this issue of... I hope it does, actually. Well, yeah. Of, do they have to reduce the water? Because there's not much water around. Which means they can't run the nuclear power generators as high or, or hotter you know, uh, as much. Which means, of course, less power output. Which, of course, is a problem in regards to everything because they need the electricity they've currently got then he's not talking about overpowering they're sort of going to reduce the power they've got we don't have that problem in the uk of course because all our power stations are uh, built next to the coast yes and so uh getting them cool they actually use seawater use seawater and said yeah it, it's just one of those minor things of but it, it was but you know other places in europe their their power production is going to be forecast to yeah. be affected. So they're planning on the problems that this is going to cause, as in, you know, do they sort of, you know, you've got to have the minimum amount of water for the power generators in relying to the fact that sort of there is a drought season going on and they have problems because, you know, they don't have the nuclear powers on the coast, so they can't use seawater. So therefore they've got to use other water sources and then you know, it's a whole problem, but they've, as I said, yeah, you know, they've set up the same similar scenarios as we have in the here in the UK. They've just got yeah you know, different problems, so they require different solutions, and they're working through all their contingencies and those sorts of things to work it through. But it was just more the fact that sort of you know you think we're having a drought season or a drought problem is that um, Europe uh, is also going through a drought after the and and just the United States. Well, yes, the United States are also going through uh, a period of drought. Uh, and, and this is directly related to climate change. Yes. All, all of it is. It, it's, you know, it's hotter. Water can evaporate more. You know, you might find there are more clouds in the sky over the next couple of... Um, or, or even not, because if it's hotter, then the clouds don't form so much. Yes, which is a bit... Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Complex. But yes, it's essentially, they've got the problem. But the America's suffering a very other, I say, problem in regards to they've got and underground aquifers. And yeah, we've got them here. But they drill and um, um, these wells that basically dry um, yeah, because, of course, there's only, they don't have as many rivers in the America. That's fair enough. And so they've got to get the water out somehow because they need it because it's, you know, I've got a town in the middle of nowhere, nowhere near a river. I need we you know people need water to survive so they're you know pumping water out of the ground, great. 
the major problem is, of course, the aquifers. Because it's been a you know, period of drying drought, those aquifers are not filling, and so yeah, they're emptying. And the, you know, these aquifers could take millions of years to fill. So we're not talking. Well, I don't know, quite millions, but right. quite a long time. A long time. It, a long time. It, a Anyway, so they're now suffering from the fact that they've been pumping this water out for a long time. There's no water going in. And so now there's these wells are empty, so that, which is why they're having problems. And that, of course, causes all the land around to sink because there's, you know, the water is basically holding the water or the land up. And so when the water goes, there's nothing holding it up. So the land collapses, creating all these sinkholes. And, yeah. well, you know, you have a large sinkhole, and you know, that, that causes even more damage to everything in the environment. So, you know, so. But sinkholes can actually be caused by actually a lot of water anyway. Oh, yes. Now, in this country, though, we actually do have a way of getting around a lot of this problem, and they they're seem to be putting some pipes up at the moment. Um, we've got a system of two types of transfer of water in this country. Mm. Inside each sort of different area, and we... In Britain, we're divided up into different sort of water authorities. And within a water authority, they have a water grid. Ooh. Much like uh, we have in the UK of electric. an electric power grid yeah. and uh, a gas these, grid. These, these um, the, the uh, veins and arteries and capillaries I was talking about earlier, aren't they? Yeah, but this is a grid. So they can actually move stuff from one place to another they can actually move water from one area quite easily to another area well i know there's been a long-term plan of pumping water from the north slash scotland down south because of course generally the south is more i wouldn't say drier but, but it is yeah the southeast of england is drier and it's got technically the largest population density yes and, and so whereas the north or scotland they don't have they have too much water not per head but sort of you know they've got overabundance of water for the amount of water people are using it yeah. whereas the south has a you know so so what they have been trying to do and this has been for a while they've been trying to whenever scotland's got excess water in its reservoirs instead of just letting it out into the oceans and rivers and whatever is to actually pump it southwards. Yeah, we have actually in this country a series of canals, as I mentioned, and they do move water from one part of the country to another. One of the canals that we recently went on a few years ago was the Langochlan Canal, and it's an interesting canal in that it's a canal and it's also a river. Yes. And when you go to a, a lock, the water you know can flow down through the lock obviously but when it's not flowing down through the lock there is actually a bypass and the water does actually just go down there because it's going downhill and it's moving from wales into you know more central england and that's where they can get some water from yes and that's where the aqueduct is yes so yeah, we've got some wonderful bits and pieces, yes. If you ever get the opportunity to come to England, go and visit some of the canals, and we have got some of the most spectacular aqueducts. That is a, a bridge that carries water over uh, a road or a valley or, or something. Uh, we've got some of most spectacular ones in the world. Anyway, so that's what we've been looking at at the moment water this idea of you know getting ready for a drought yes. i would say at the moment it is a case of take precautions we aren't in a panic system yet but we've had a dry winter we've had a dry spring and if we're sensible with water then there's plenty to yeah, go around it, and will it'll last. Yeah, the, the answer is actually now is the period to look for things like leaky taps and those sorts of things. You know, basically prevent waste now before you have a problem of being fined and let yeah, down. The ju line. Just really, it is be sensible with water. It is, as Paul said, don't run taps, basically. Uh, that, that one works really well. Don't use the watering 
systems, the, the hose pipes and all those sort of things, but use instead your uh, watering can and make sure that things like the dishwasher's full and the washing machine's full when you're going to use it and that can all save water. You've been listening to the Going Green podcast, looking at water. Next week, we'll have a look at another topic on Going Green. Until then, it's goodbye from me. A goodbye from me. Right. Bye-bye. Bye.